Hello, this is the first Roots video for OCR Pure Core AS Further Maths and it looks at finding the relationships between roots and coefficients. For linear equations, we know that graphically a line will cross the x-axis only once or not at all if it is parallel to the x-axis. For quadratic equations, there are two real roots or a repeated root or two complex conjugate roots. If you have not done the complex topic yet, don't worry about that third option. You may want to pause and sketch the graphs to revise these uh, options of roots. Let's just look at general equations for a linear equation. And we might say that was y equals mx plus c, or we could use coefficients a and b and say y equals ax plus b. And then for a quadratic, we tend to use the coefficients a for x squared, b for the x coefficient, and c. If we look at the quadratic equation whose roots are x equals 5 and x equals minus 2, then we know that there are factors x minus 5 and x plus 2. If we expand this out, we would find we had x squared minus 5x plus 2x minus 10 equals 0. In other words, if we then combined the two x coefficients, we would have x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0 would be the equation we're looking for with roots x equals 5 and x equals minus 2. You will note here that the sum of the factors 5 and minus 2 was what led us to um, this factor of 3. Only looking here we can see that there's a negative. And we can see also that the product of 5 and minus 2 gives us this value of minus 10. Of course, the equation, actually, another version of the equation I should say, is could be a multiple of x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. So if we compare that to the general y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. In this example here, we've got a equals 1, b equals minus 3, and c equals minus 10. If we had chosen, for example, a equals 2, then the b and c values would also be doubled. So considering the general quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught, we will allocate the Greek letters alpha and beta for the roots. We could solve for alpha and beta by using the quadratic equation or by completing the square. But we can also just consider the sum and the product of the two roots. If we divide by a, we will find that we get x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals 0. This will, if we then factorise it, give us x minus alpha and x minus beta as the factors if there are roots alpha and beta. If we expand the x minus alpha x minus beta we would find we had x squared minus alpha x minus beta x plus alpha beta. Pulling together the coefficients for x, that would give us minus alpha plus beta, lots of x, plus alpha beta. If we then look at those equivalent values and compare the coefficients for the left-hand side and the right-hand side, then 
looking at equating the coefficients for x, we notice that we have this sum, alpha plus beta, must equal minus b over a. And the coefficients for the units, we find that the product, alpha beta, equals c over a. It's important to consider the signs here. As you can see, the sum is minus b over a, whereas the product is just c over a. We can extend this idea to higher power equations. If we consider a general cubic equation, and here we add an extra coefficient, so that y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero, there will be three roots denoted by alpha, beta and gamma. We do tend to always use the Greek letters to represent the roots. You may want to pause here to think about the relationships for yourself. You may also want to sketch some graphs to consider the types of root possible to link in with other topics. If we expand the factors, which will be x minus alpha, x minus beta and x minus gamma, we can, through our previous work, go straight to what the quadratic would be. Now I'm choosing to multiply together the, um, the latter two factors, but you might want to try it for yourself, multiplying the first two factors, for example, to get your quadratic. So now I have x minus alpha times x squared minus beta plus gamma x plus beta gamma. If I carry on expanding that, I would have x cubed minus alpha x squared minus beta plus gamma x squared plus alpha times beta plus gamma x plus beta gamma x minus alpha beta gamma. When I gather up all those terms and consolidate the coefficients, that should give me x cubed minus alpha plus beta plus gamma lots of x squared plus alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha and it doesn't matter in which order you write gamma alpha alpha gamma depending if you want to go alphabetically or not times x minus alpha beta gamma and that would equal zero for this equation x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero. It's worth noting the signs and if you like the pattern that's emerging here. So the coefficient of x cubed will be one. The coefficient of the x squared is the sum of the products and then you have what we call pairwise products and then you have the product itself. Note the signs go from positive, negative, positive and negative again. So we are now in a position to compare and contrast the coefficients with this expanded product here. As we did with the quadratic equation, it's easiest if we first of all divide by a. So if we look, x cubed plus b over a x squared plus c over a x plus d over a equals naught. And then we can compare and contrast. Well, the x cubed and the x cubed are still the same. If we look at the coefficients of x squared, we will find that alpha plus beta plus gamma will equal minus b over a. If we look at the com co compare the coefficients of x, we find that alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha will equal c over a. And comparing the coefficients of the units, we have that alpha beta gamma, the product, equals minus d over a. It's important to note the signs here. You be very careful when working with them. 
particularly as A, B, C and D may themselves be either positive or negative. So do take care in working these out. Hopefully you can now see a pattern emerging from the quadratic to the cubic. If we take this upper power to the quartic equations, then the pattern will continue. You may wish to pause here and think through the relationships for yourself. It may also be useful at this stage to introduce some slightly different notation. For example, we can write sigma alpha to actually mean alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta where delta is that fourth extra root. We could write sigma alpha beta to be all of the pairwise um, options. Whoops, sorry, alpha, delta, and so on, and that goes on a bit. Um, similarly, for alpha, beta, gamma, all the if, sort of three wise options. And then of course, we're still going to have this product alpha, beta, gamma, delta. You can see that for a general quartic equation, we might well have started with y equals ax to the four plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e equals zero. And on this line here, we've already divided by a. If you then do, as we did before for the cubic and the quadratic equations, and consider the coefficients, and compare and contrast for a cubed, you should find that you get sigma alpha equals minus b over a. For the x squared coefficients, you should find that sigma alpha beta equals c over a. For x, that sigma alpha beta gamma equals minus d over a. And for the units, as you would expect, alpha beta gamma delta would equal e over a. I think that's plenty of hints and I hope you have fun working it out for yourselves. In the next session, 1.2 on roots, we will consider how to use these relationships between roots and coefficients.